this is what we're going to deal with. And we've done the intros. Uh, we are talking today to everyone in our house leagues, which is over 35 house leagues, over 500 rep teams select. We're talking to our coaches, our referees, our trainers, timekeepers. But most importantly, like Stephanie said, we're talking to our hockey families and uh, we're going to use our website with video and sessions like this to connect. Uh, if you're willing to watch John Tavares skate around today for four minutes on the practice ice by himself, we're hoping that you can give us 12 to 15 minutes to talk about the season starting. Okay, so our structure, and this is house league all the way to AAA, is set by the OHF, the Ontario Hockey Federation. Uh, they've given us the structure to come back uh, in the fall. And each house league will determine what they want to do. We're going to let house league people know when they can start. Uh, North York, Mississauga, some great office staff there running the leagues. They're going to let you know what their seasonal plans are. They've already got this information. And then AAA, AAA, it is centralized to the GTHL. So maybe it seems like there's a few more answers because it's directly run from the office. But you'll be able to touch base with your house leagues to see where they are in terms of planning as well. So we're going to talk about something called the pathway. It's called the Adam pathway before we change the age groups. And this is U11. Uh, it's important that we put this slide here so people know the pathway is house league to AAA. It's not elite development. It's development about all our hockey players in these younger age groups. So at U11 and below, and it's about having the players enjoy the sport, build more skills together and not focus on that small development of the 1% you see at the world juniors. This is about making the game accessible, more skilled for all the players starting at a younger age group. So you'll see the pathway come in every now and then in our conversation. Here's a real easy slide for anyone who's in house league U12 to U21. House leagues can start in any format they want as early as September 7th. They can start with exhibition games, evaluations, training camp. That is wide open for any of the players. And that is most of the players in the GTHL. House leagues will choose when they start, when they end, but they have the ability to start in any type of format that they like. In house league, in the pathways here, we've got some weeks that are assigned to some different stages and the prep stage is new. Uh, what the prep stage is, is about that skill development. And the skill development is also fun development. You're bringing everyone back after 19 months. And this is a Hockey Canada initiative that was in place even before the pandemic and it's here to stay. Uh, those weeks that you see there, they can be adjusted by the age group based on how many weeks the house leagues run. But it's important that they run those four stages. And our office has all kinds of development support for house leagues in terms of what they can do in the prep, evaluation, development, regular season, and end of season phase. So house league has got some great options. And that last slide there just lets you know hey, it's proportional. If your house league decides to run a shorter season, they're gonna proportionally lay out their calendar. Here's the competitive structure, uh, U12 to U18. Those are AAA, AA, and A. Uh, this information is on our website. So tryouts are in stages like they've always been. Uh, the GTHL required development stage, that's imposed. So you might see the Northern Ontario Hockey Association, Ontario Minor Hockey Association or Alliance run differently. Ours is mandated. We're coming back after 19 months. There's going to be an opportunity for kids to get on the ice, call it training camp practices, the ability to do some exhibition games. So that development stage is about not panicking in July and August to get in the ice rink. It's when it's healthy, when it's safe, we'll have time to get back into the rink September and October. And that gets us to everyone starting on October 8th. That's for tournaments. Tournaments in the OHF, which was our governing body, the Ontario Hockey Federation, everyone is at the same start line. There are no tournaments in September. The earliest they can start is October 8th. And the regular season in the competitive side will start November 1st. And the interesting thing this year is everyone has to play meaningful hockey to at least March 1st. So the earliest that will start with playoffs is March 2nd. Here's how the pathways work in the U10, U11. So that would be AAA, AA, and A. There's a prep phase and then the tryout and the development phase. So even though they're AAA, they're still doing the Hockey Canada prep and development aspects of the program. 
So like we said, pathways are not about elite development. They're about developing a greater pool of players to enjoy the sport with some skill-based activities, fun stuff. And some of the house leagues, to be honest with you folks, they were already doing a prep phase. So this isn't going to be new to many of the house leagues that are already out there working on skill development. Uh, in terms of prep sessions for AAA, AA, and A, the GTHL will be managing all the preps. So U10 and U11, you'll register attendance-wise. Uh, they're not mandatory to play, but you will book, and we will have our own coaching staffs out there. It won't be coaching staffs from any of the clubs. And we will be working on what Hockey Canada has given us, which is skill development and fun. So they're open for everyone. Uh, players in house league, if you can get on attendance wise, you can show up. There's no restriction to who gets to come to a prep session. Like we said earlier, tournaments are established by the OHF. So everyone is waiting to October 8th. And this really is a fair way to do ice availability. You think of small towns that don't put the ice in early. Think of Toronto, where many of our rinks are being used for vaccination clinics, other uses. Some high schools are inside rinks. So to have equity, we weren't going to have tournaments start in September. It was a great move by the OHF. In terms of the competitive side, there's four weeks of preseason tournaments. Like we said, we're coming out back after 19 months. There's a great opportunity to have exhibition games slash preseason tournaments and get back into the sport of hockey. Uh, Registration is always one that's kind of tricky. House leagues are a little bit different. So here's just the basics of what we're going to do. House league players will be able to register to the GTHL June 14th. Every house league player has to do it. You go through in, there's some waivers, and you will assign yourself to the house league that you want. So your local league will get your information. Players on a competitive side, they'll be able to register starting August 1st. And behind the scenes, our, our registration team can check things out like birth certificates and things like that, which is important in the competitive side. House League is wide open. You can go anywhere you want. There's a few restrictions on the competitive side. When there's a player who would like to play House League, commit to their local league, but still wants to try out, maybe go to a single A or double A tryout, you can do that. You can register with your House League and then get to a competitive tryout. If you get a spot, there'll be a cutoff date, of course, and you'll get an automatic release to move up if you wanna get into competitive hockey. This is a great way for you to have a spot in house league, which you, you wanna be a part of. Venture out, try out for some teams. If it doesn't work out, you stay in your house league. If not, you move on to competitive. So it's a real easy process for players that are in the middle and still making decisions on where they wanna be in the fall. Uh, residency rules. We didn't have this slide in our session on Tuesday. It's competitive. Uh, competitive players are, are interested in this, hockey families. Everything reverts to 2019, 2020. Uh, we're really doing well in Ontario. Maybe public health units come up and say we have to have restrictions. But right now, you can go back to the player movement at the competitive side that you had in 2019, 2020. That's available on our website. Uh, you can email us and we'll get you that info. Uh, we put this in, vulnerable sector searches and criminal checks. It's for people that are 18 and older. Uh, we just wanted to let people know, if you're involved for the first time as a coach, trainer, referee, interacting with players, you need to get one. Uh, it's a way that we can safeguard as best as we can our kids. Uh, if you're already involved in sport and you've already had a VSS, you don't need a new one if it's uh, later than 17, 18. So if it was 17 and 18, you filed, you signed off on a letter of declaration. But if it was 18, 19, 19, 20, or even if you did one for 2021, you just need to sign off on the letter of declaration. And, and the main reason for this slide is to say, if you need one, don't panic. We know that all the police services are going to be hit hard when we get back to regular life. There'll be adjustments for when you can submit it. You might be able to submit your receipt and then wait a couple months because we know there's a backlog. So don't be in a panic mode. We're just letting hockey families know what we do to safeguard their kids. And for those getting involved for the first time, you do this once every four years, you have to make a small financial investment. And the good news is some of the house leagues and clubs will pay the fee for you. So just a little information there. Certifications and qualifications. So uh, in Toronto, our numbers were 
always a little bit higher than the rest of the province. So we were already working on ways that all of our clinic delivery would be virtual. Uh, our coaching program is going to hopefully have more details June 15th, once we hear from the OHF and Hockey Canada. And the officiating side, of course, we're waiting for the OHF. Here's another don't panic. It's going to be virtual. You'll get your certification that's needed. There'll be lots of options online. You will not miss out being on the ice as a referee or as a coach or a trainer because it'll be virtual. And this year for all the teams in the GTHL, House League to AAA, you just need your level one trainers course. Okay, so another don't panic. I know it's May and you're already thinking about it, but we will have options. Uh, GTHL game plan 2.0. Uh, this is something that a lot of hockey families don't know about. And this was our health and safety protocols. This was what we called it last year. Uh, last year, we had a plan to come back in, in August and we had a 25 page document on how, what we would need to get back into the rink. We don't have the new one right now because we obviously are, are getting towards better news. Uh, we will update it, uh, but we have the luxury of a little bit of time. And this essentially will be questions that we get about who needs to be vaccinated? Uh, can you use dressing rooms? Who's allowed in the building? All the health and safety stuff, it's not a hockey person's decision. It's public health. Uh, the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto has been uh, you know, one of our guiding lights there. So non-hockey people will be telling hockey people what we have to do to have a safe environment. And if the numbers keep going well, and we get kids vaccinated, maybe that 25 page document's a lot slimmer uh, maybe you don't need a safety person like we were talking about last year. So that will be available as we get closer. And, and like we said, that will be people who are experts in health and safety, and they'll be helping the hockey people get the sport back in. So I appreciate everyone's time. I mean, Stephanie Karate in our office is looking to get more of us online, doing some quick video to educate things. We might do one on vulnerable sector criminal record checks. We might want do one on clinics. We want to stay connected. Uh, we want to reach out to our hockey families as much as we can. It's been a long season, but we are looking forward to seeing you in an ice hockey rink come in the fall. So thanks to everyone for their time and enjoy your day.